Hello guys, welcome to today's class where we'll be looking at another property, the final property of, of, um, of binary, binary operations which is called the inverse element. Now the inverse element is very easy to relate to it because it, also, it serves as a continuation of the identity element. The process of the inverse element is actually a, a, continual, a, a, a continuous process from solving the identity element. So, if you're asked to find the, the inverse element, the idea of what you have been told to do is to actually find the identity element first, then apply your identity element that you have gotten to actually get your inverse element. Now, what is the relationship between the identity element and the inverse element? In, in, a, in a case where you have an operation where you have a particular variable A relating with the inverse element, then the product should always be the identity element. And that is the rule that the, that the inverse element abides by. What am I saying in short? I'm saying that words. For the inverse element, the inverse element can be represented, sometimes it is represented with the letter i, at other times it is represented with the inverse, with the actual mathematical inverse of whatever the original variable is. So anyone you choose to use, you'll be correct, as far as you're going through the right procedure. But more often than not, we use the letter i, so as not to get students confused and think that words, they can actually use this to also depict this. Because in this case, they won't be equal. Because this a is for minus 1 in this case is just a symbol. It is not a mathematical statement. It is just a symbol where it represents the inverse element. So we'll be using the letter i for cases as this in this in this in this particular se session. So for the inverse elements, we said was for any time you have a variable a in an operation with the inverse element i. The product, that is the value formed, the product formed must be the identity element. And that is what the inverse element talks about. That is how we can actually get the inverse element. And if we know that for us to get the inverse element, we must already get the identity element, then we, we, we know that was, that is the required procedure for us to actually get the inverse element. We must first have already dealt with the identity element and gotten its value before moving on to the inverse element to get its value also. So that, that is the basics of what the inverse element is all about. We'll be looking at an example briefly. We have a set N containing natural numbers. And then in this case, we are asked to find the inverse element of the operation that then if X operation Y is equals to X minus 2Y plus XY, where X and Y are both elements of the set N of natural numbers. What we are supposed to do here, first of all, present your operation we have x operation y giving us x minus 2y plus xy. And then we are told to find the inverse element. So we are looking for the i. That is what we are looking for. That is the unknown in this case. We are not looking for the identity element in quotes, but we are looking for the inverse element. Although we we'll still need to get the identity element first before we can deal with the inverse element. So first of all, the first thing we should remember is that was for inverse, for inverse elements for inverse elements i we need to remember that with the a okay since in this case we're not dealing with a we're dealing with x as our, as our first variable we'll be saying x operation the inverse element should give us the identity element in accordance with the law of the inverse element so if that is the case here it means that what we need to get our identity element before we can even talk about our inverse element. So moving on, we say for identity element meanwhile, for identity element E, we, re we need to remember the formula for identity elements that tells us that what for a particular X operation, the identity element must give us X again. So we need to get the identity element of this operation first. And we remember the operation giving us x minus 2y plus xy for x operation y. So for x operation e, it will be x minus 2e plus xe, giving us x. So to get the identity elements, we need to make e the subject of the formula here, which we already know. You can see what well, this is xe minus 2e goes to x minus x. So we have x minus x. 
And then from here, we can move forward. M moving forward, we can say our e here, factorize our e here, we have x minus 2 equals to x minus z giving us 0. We know our e definitely will be 0 divided by x minus 2. And we know 0 divided by anything gives us 0. And we know our identity elements for this operation is 0. But then this is not what, this is not the final answer. This is not where we are arriving at. This is just a step in the process. So we know we are still going for our inverse elements. So back to our inverse element now. For inverse elements, we remember that was our x operation. The inverse elements must give us the identity element. So we are recalling this. By recalling this, we remember that this is the relationship. But but in this case, we have gotten our identity element. I've gotten our identity element e to be zero. So if our e is zero now, I can now say my x operation i will be giving me zero. So I'll be using my I can now use my operation to actually solve for this. For the operation we recall for x operation y, x operation y gives us give us x minus two y plus x y. So for x operation i, it will give us x minus 2i plus xi, which, which, which is equating us to the identity element which we got, which is 0. From here, we can get our inverse elements. By making i sort of a formula here, we have xi minus 2i equals to minus x. I can see my i here is common. I bring out my x minus 2 equals to minus x. Moving forward, I can say my i here is equal to minus x over x minus 2, which I can also represent as x over 2 minus x. That is, after multiplying both sides by minus, see, so this is what x over 2 minus x, and then this becomes my inverse element. So this is the inverse element of the operation given above. So here we have successfully, we have been able to successfully get the inverse element for this operation. In the next class, we'll be looking at another example on how we can actually approach this inverse element based on our idea of the identity element. See you next class.